Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I just want to go over the differences between Transform Bases and Transform Origin. Alright, now, Transform is obviously a class, and that represents a combination of the rotation, the translation, also known as the position, and the scaling of an object. It is used to represent basically its position and its orientation within 3D space. So let's start by taking a look at an example of a piece of code and we'll take a look at the origin first. Alright, so starting out with our example block here, all we have is transform.origin plus equals a vector 3. And inside of there, we have our three values, X, Y, and Z. And we just have the Z set to one, X and Y set to zero. Now in this code, um, we are modifying the origin component of the transform by adding a vector three to it. That represents, in this case, a movement of one unit in the positive Z axis direction. So if we were to take a look at that, and I'm just going to have to grab a capture real quick. Just give me two seconds here. Boom. There we go. We can see here it is. And right there, it's at one. It's fine. It gives us a nice base to work off. But if I change to six, it's going to move six units in the positive Z direction. You can see now it's down by the bottom, kind of going off the screen. So that should give you an idea of uh, the origin here when we're modifying it. And we could do the same thing if we wanted to modify, play with uh, our other numbers here. For example, two on the Y, uh, maybe three on the X. And we could take a look at that. And now our cube is hanging out over there. All right. So in this case, the origin component of the transform is representing that position of the object inside of that 3D space. So by modifying the origin, we can move the object around. Of course, when you're playing a game or you're coding this for a game, uh, this is what you're going to use and to make your character actually move around. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at, at the uh, basis of the transform now. So in this time, we're modifying the basis of our transform component, or sorry, the basis component of our transform. So watch how I word that. Uh, by setting it to a new basis that represents a rotation of 45 degrees around the y-axis. And that's really all a basis is representing, I guess we could say, because we're setting it to a new one. And... <clears throat> We're just uh, picking whether an X, a Y, or a Z axis, and you can change these numbers, of course, by um, different values. And we're passing in an angle in degrees, so we're using degree or deg to rad to change our degrees into radians here. And that's having an effect by rotating our object. If we take a look here real quick, we see here's what it looks like at zero one zero. And if we're to say come in here, maybe with one on all axis, we can see eh, we're still getting kind of like that front face. So let's go a little creative. We'll do three, one, two, and we take a look. And that actually seems to uh, remain the same there. Uh, one second. Let's just uh, normalize that. There we go. So you see now we're getting these kind of other weird angles going on. As we play with these values a bit. And you can always go ahead and tweak the angle that you want to use. But in this case, the basis component of our transform represents the rotation of the object in 3D space. So by modifying the basis component, we can rotate our object around. Now the basis can... Get a little confusing if you really want to go into the details of that because then we're going to go into uh, a three by three matrix and then you got to go ahead and you got to learn about uh what a matrix is and what those are for and 
<laughs> it just gets into a whole thing, but that's the essentially what the basis component of a transform is there. Now, last but not least here, we do have one more property, or we have a component of the basis. And this one has actually never worked for me personally. I don't know if it's a bug in this version or what, but that would be the scale here. So we can get the scale, or use the scaled method on our basis and pass in a vector three to affect the scale of our cube. And this, for me, has never worked. So I'll go ahead and run this. You see, my cube looks exactly the same. So that doesn't really play any effect into this, but um, in this case, uh, we're modifying the basis component of the transform and we're scaling it um, along uh, in this case, specifically the y-axis by 2, and the x and z by 1, and of course 1 is going to be your default. And this should represent the scaling of the object in 3D space. Now, I'm not sure, maybe I'm mis misunderstanding uh, what this is supposed to do uh, in some way, but... I'm not seeing any scaling that's going on, at least visually. Maybe I'm not supposed to, but if that's the case, maybe it's not broken. But to me, I think I should see something visually. Maybe I'm the crazy one, but anyways, uh, that gives you an idea of uh, what basis is and what the origin is when it comes to the transform object. And to summarize everything that we've gone over, transform.basis and transform.origin are two distinct components of a transform in Gado, Gado or Godot, or if you're one of the other people, Godot. And they represent different aspects of an object's position and orientation in three-dimensional space. Transform.origin represents the translation or position of the object in 3d space while transform.basis represents the rotation and scaling of an object in three-dimensional space all right i hope you guys found this video helpful in understanding the difference between transform.basis and transform.origin uh, within this engine and if you have any other questions or comments things that you want to see Feel free to leave them down below, and as always, thanks for watching.